Hi there and welcome to Naturally Recovering Autism. I am your host, Karen Thomas, and I wanna thank you so much for being here and being a proactive parent and getting the resources that you need to let your child live their most fulfilling and independent life possible. When my own son was diagnosed with autism, I was told to drug him and try behavioral therapies and there was nothing else that we could do for him but manage his symptoms the rest of his life. But I didn't wanna do that. Fortunately, my background in craniosacral therapy of now 30 years, let me know that the brain can and does heal, but I didn't know that much about autism. What I did know is that I didn't want to just mask the symptoms with dangerous drugs. I wanted to find the causes and work with them naturally. And fast forward, it took me a decade and a lot of time and effort, but today my son is no longer diagnosable with autism after being told it could not happen. So I'm here to share with you valuable resources to, to save you the time and some of the expense that I had to spend to figure it out and to help you let your child lead to their best results possible. Every child's level of recovery is different, but we know that children who couldn't sleep through the night are sleeping now through the night and happily. Their immune systems are now strong where they were once sick all the time. Children who were nonverbal and their parents were told they could never speak are now speaking. Children who were getting D's and F's in school are getting A's and B's. And those that were so anxious all the time and couldn't sit still and, and were uncomfortable in their own bodies are now calm and happy and relaxed. And they're leading fulfilling and independent lives with friends. This is what we want for our kids. So I'm here to share the resources with you so that you can get the best results for your child the best possible. And you can start that right now with my free download of this top seven foods to eliminate beginning today of the top foods that are the most inflammatory and toxic that are contributing to those physical and behavioral symptoms of autism that your child is having. They're making his life uncomfortable. So you can get that right now at naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash seven foods and feel free to share that with anybody you know who would be interested. And I will also link to it in today's show notes. There's of course a lot more than diet, but this is something you could start doing today that will begin to reduce those symptoms. And I'm happy to share everything I can with you. So right now, let's dive into today's episode. In this episode, I am going to give you seven tips to help create calm for children with autism and their parents. And that means you. I know this is a really challenging time. The COVID pandemic has added a new element of stress to all of our lives. And when it does, and experts are saying the element of anxiousness and even mental disorders that has developed for many individuals is very likely to continue much longer than the physical health impact. We don't need to get waylaid helping our child, or I don't want you to get waylaid helping your child or not having the support you need because your personal mental health is very, very important. And the pandemic hit and the shutdown caused a lot of anxiousness and depressive symptoms for us, but there is hope. You don't have to let this affect you long-term. You do have a say in how you live your life. Mental health issues are on the rise and we need to be taking action now to support our personal needs and the needs of our children. And children with autism are much more sensitive than most people. They sense everything around them, including the emotions and the feelings of their parents. So we need to be an example for them. Also, you think about it, if a child senses a parent is stressed that they naturally, then they're naturally going to have concern about why they see my, my, my mom, my dad, they're, they're stressed. They feel fearful. They're anxious. So there must be something for me to fear. Even if they don't understand what it is, if they see that you're feeling that, then they sense it and they feel it too. And it can create a lot of anxiousness for them. And our kids need us, you know, to be the best that we can be and healthy. So we can take care of them and be here for them as well. You know, not just physically healthy, but mentally healthy too. And we don't have to revert to pharmaceutical drugs for answers, just as you know, I'm natural about everything. And we want to also affect, there are a lot of underlying health issues there are pathogens, there are toxins, uh, there are other things that are creating these issues, not only for our children, but in ourselves as well. And many things that our kids have were passed in utero uh, from us. So we also 
know that many of the issues that they have that have developed into autism are things that we are experiencing, but maybe not at a level of autism, but we might have um, health issues with gut and candida overgrowth, which we'll talk about a little bit today, uh, which are all these toxins and the pathogens that can create all of these brain inflammation for us, but we experience it in different ways. But there are natural solutions. So let's go into them. Um, below, I'm listing seven tips to help you and your child to gain improved physical and mental health to help restore overall calming. And I am going to link to some really helpful resources, which will be on the show notes for today's show, which will be at naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash 136. So uh, you can go to number 136, the episode and um, in the blog, uh, especially on my website at naturallyrecoveringautism.com, you'll find it there at number 136 and uh, make sure that, uh, that you get some of these links because there are some very helpful things I'm going to share with you. So first of all, we're going to talk about gut health and diet. You know, I'm big on this one. If you've been following me for a while, you, you know why, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit further. Why is diet and the right foods? Why are they so important? Well, with the bad foods, you know, the gluten and casein, the dairy and wheat, all of these are very inflammatory, soy, corn, sugar, processed carbohydrates. They feed the candida and the bad bacteria in our gut. They turn to sugars in our body and they're very inflammatory. So they weaken the gut lining. We can end up with leaky gut, which then allows undigested food food into our bloodstream. And then the immune system reacts, causing all of these other inflammatory responses and also triggering more autoimmune issues because it's triggering the immune system to say, Hey, there's some foreign agents here that I need to fight off. And so it goes into attack mode. Well, this can cause a lot of anxiety, especially when the candida overgrowth is there too. Um, gut health also keeps our immune system strong, makes up 80% of the immune system. So it's really important to take good care of your gut. And I'm going to link to uh, the download, the free download for the top seven foods to avoid uh, in case you haven't, uh, haven't had that yet or don't know what those are. I want to help you get started right now with that. It's a very slow process to transition out of those because your gut, your body, those candida in your, in your in your gut are addicted to those foods, especially the sugars, they thrive on them and feed off of them. And as we starve them out, then they uh, release more toxins. And that can again, cause some more issues of, of uh, anxiousness or fatigue, et cetera. So um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about some binders in a minute to help the body with that. Um, but other than that, it's really important again, back to the stress issue of Things like serotonin and dopamine, they are responsible for things like mood, sleep, appetite, our ability to focus uh, and calming. These things are really important to know that the serotonin and dopamine receptors are made in the gut. So you've got to make sure that your gut is working well, or you're not going to be able to think clearly or sleep clear or be calm because these brain messengers can't be made properly. So again, back to all the importance of gut health and diet. And I've linked to a resource there for you at the top seven foods to avoid. Next, super important. A lot of people don't really understand the, I think that if there's one thing that you can do for your life, it's support your liver. We are bombarded today in our environment, the food we eat, the air we breathe, the water we drink, everything is, is, has got so many toxins in it and we need to support our liver. It is our organ of detoxification and a congested liver, which children with autism always have, has thing, has the toxins back up in our system. So we've got heavy metals. Um, also knowing that things like heavy metals, especially mercury and mold biotoxins, these all affect our hormones. And this can also be affecting our stress hormone, which is cortisol. So liver support with toxin binders is really, really important when going through any type of a detoxification process, 
but it's important anytime, like literally every day I am taking toxin binders and I suggest everybody do that because they help the liver to pull out some of this toxic overload that it's backed up with and it can't keep up with, it can't process it fast enough. So that can be really, really helpful for the system and calming actually as well in the long term and helps tremendously with your health. Um, there are some really good calming supplements. And I know that you'll be all over this one. <laughs> the calming supplements, um, I'm going to link to again, a couple here in the show notes. Anxiousness can come from a lot of things. It's not just one thing, right? We know that there are external environmental triggers like toxins, but also there are internal underlying pathogens and infections. And we need to eat right, of course, and detoxify as we talked about and clear some of these underlying pathogens, infections, and infections. We want to make sure our home doesn't have any mold exposure. We're not breathing that on a regular basis. Uh, there are other things, parasitic infections that we're living with that we need to make sure are eradicated properly and safely. But in while you're doing these, these important stages, which I call the, the naturally recovering autism four-stage process, right? While you're doing these, you want to also have some support. Okay, what do I do right now for the stress and the sleep and the other issues here? Because it's important to, you know, that it, it takes time to clear these out of the body. It's not just going to happen in three days. So what do I do in the meantime? There is something called stress reducer elixir that is very, very helpful, natural, safe. It tastes like water. It's liquid. So it's super easy to give to kids. Uh, I'll link to that in the show notes. Um, and that can be given any time, day or night. Uh, in multiple times a day, same with cannabis or CBD. I'm a huge fan of CBD oils and um, there are quality ones. And I will uh, uh, link to one in the show notes, but it's really important to know that um, CBD can also be used multiple times a day or at night to help calm the system. Uh, natural brain supplementation, various different ones. I've did an, done an entire podcast episode in the past and I will link to that in the show notes because there are a lot of different things to know. But um, for an example here, I'll give you something like 5-HTP. This is really helpful for naturally building serotonin. Now, serotonin is, again, in control. It's our neurotransmitter that's in control of things like mood and sleep and appetite. So 5-HTP can be very helpful for people with anxiousness or depressive issues or need some calming. Um, also be sure again, um, that, uh, that, that we go back to mold over and over because this mold is a lot of people are being put on, uh, medications like SSRIs for, um, serotonin reuptake inhibitors is what they are. The pharmaceutical drug for depression, when actually they're finding a lot of these people are having mold biotoxin issues. So I will link to some of the information on mold biotoxin uh, episodes that I've done in the past. So you can look at that as well and learn more. If you're not aware of it, it's very, very important as one of the co-infections that mimic some of the symptoms of autism and can be why your child's not getting well. Sensory calming. There are sensory overload issues. Um, it's very common in children with autism but also common in parents too. These underlying pathogens and toxins, again, take an effect on our central nervous system. They are important sensory, they're important sensory processing issues for parents and caregivers to really become aware of and what can be done about them so you can get better help for your children and yourself. So I will link to an episode podcast number 13. I interviewed a sensory processing expert, Lindsay Beal, and in that interview, we address many questions that parents ask, such as what are the different types of sensory processing disorders a person can have, uh, what can be done about it. Additionally, um, podcast number 14, I interview Sonia Story in her very successful at-home online program, the Brain and Sensory Foundation course, and I will link to that as well. And this is huge. I've created a free download for you, the at-home play ideas that uh, a whole download on at-home play ideas that can help calm sensory issues. 
These are fun games and toys and things that you can do in and around your home that actually help to calm the system down. Um, and there are even things that mom and dad you can do use with your child as well. Next, emotional mindset. Emotion code work is one of the pieces uh, to release old subconscious patterns that keeps us in our stress response and reacting to life's occurrences rather than responding. There is a difference between reacting and responding. Responding is a choice. So when reacting is usually when we don't choose, we just quickly react, we snap. So one thing to do is count backwards from five really quickly, five, four, three, two, one, then take a deep breath and let it all the way out. And now notice how you feel. In these less than five seconds that you do take the time to count down, it actually calms the system and takes you out of that response. So give that one a try. Mon mindset is also about what we focus on, but the conscious level is not enough. We have to get to the subconscious level and we attract what we think about desired or undesired. So for details on how to do this uh, in number in podcast number 118, I have the five steps to apply a positive mindset and draw more of what you want into your life. Additionally, tapping acupressure points is helps to assist emotional balancing and also sometimes is referred to as emotional freedom technique or EFT. It's based on a combination of Chinese medicine or acupressure and meridian points and Western psychotherapy. Meridian points are connected to the body's energy flow. And so they're like the body's freeway network for energy. Sometimes this freeway has emotional traffic jams. And when the energy flow is disrupted, physical and emotional issues can arise. So when stimulated, these acupressure points send signals to the stress centers of the brain and these signals bypass the thinking portion of the brain and get to the subconscious beliefs. The thinking portion of the brain is commonly only accessed during talk therapy. So in this situation, the body's emotional energy pathways are not shifted. This is the key component to why tapping these acupressure points works. And it's because it's treating the causes rather than just the symptoms. And I'm actually give you a video tutorial on tapping these points uh, in podcast episode number 120, tapping acupressure points to assist emotional balance. So I will link to that for you in the show notes as well. Next, we have exercise. Exercise releases serotonin in our brain so it can actually improve our mood. It's also healthy for us to move, of course, getting oxygen into our blood and brain strengthening our muscles and bones and flushing toxins out of our system. Aerobic exercise like running or um, biking are great, but they're sim but sometimes you can't, you don't always have the time to do it. So just know that something is better than nothing. And even going for a short walk can really, really be helpful. It's very, very important. Um, sleep. Sleep is crucial to our overall physical and mental health. And it's when our bodies heal. Sleep can be affected by many things too. The stress hormone cortisol can actually wake you up. During sleep, things like candida, that pathogenic overgrowth of bacteria, feeds on your blood sugar. It stresses the body and the brain and your glucose levels are lowered significantly. So your brain relies on the right amount of glucose to function properly. Therefore, the stress during sleep overworks the adrenal glands due to the imbalance in blood sugar. And this triggers candida induced hypoglycemia. And I've done an entire podcast where I share this. I'm going to link to it in the show notes so you can understand more about it. It's very important to be aware of. A common symptom is waking at night, usually around 3 a.m., uh, again, the right diet's really important, and I'll link to, to the, the top seven foods to avoid. Right diet's important to starve out the candida and kill off that pathogenic overgrowth. And um, there's also a great supplement that I, I, I use and have had tremendous success with uh, called Restful Sleep Elixir. Again, it can be taken every night and safe and healthy. Uh, tastes like water. You can give it to your kids and yourself. Uh, 
it and uh, and again, it's tasteless, so the kids don't mind it at all. Um, and I will link to that for you in the show notes today too. And again, the show notes today will be at naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash one thirty six. So all of those resources that I mentioned today in this episode will be available for you there. Please utilize them. And I hope so much that they're helpful for you on this journey. I know it can be challenging, you know, just to be a parent, then having a parent of being a parent of a child with autism has its additional challenges. And then the COVID pandemic and what, you know, what, what our lives have been, how our lives have been changed in the last year and a half has really been tremendously stressful on all of us. So these are some really helpful ways with coping techniques and some natural supplementation that can really help benefit you for the long-term health. I hope this has been helpful for you. Take good care of yourself and I will see you next time.